Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as the star. You know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America, in offices and factories, on farms and branches. In mines and oil fields, folks find that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama me, I'm more excited than I've ever been in my whole life. So don't be surprised, Mama me, if this letter is a look like it was written by Uncle Pietro's goat. <laughs> the reason I'm, I'm so excited is, is because... I'm an inventor of something. That's right, Mamma Mia. And as soon as they're going to be in the history books, another Italian and inventor's name are with the Marconi. That's going to be Luigi. <laughs> I guess you're thinking, Mamma Mia, what could a Luigi invent? In America, lots of things has been invented already. Well, that's true. Once the women was to have a kitchens full of cans. As long as it comes some smart American, he's an event of the can opener. <laughs> then another smart American is an event of the safety pin. The greatest invention in the whole world of full little babies. They can walk around all they want to without the having to pick up with their pants. <laughs> but now, Mama Mia, is a time, is a time to tell you what I invent. It's a marvelous Mama Mia, because because it's a good for everybody. And I'm a got idea from a lifetime of fountain a pen, which is a go on a right and even after you die. <laughs> <laughs> Mama me, you know you know how summertime your shoelaces a break and you can't wear your shoes? That's a happening to everybody. So I'm an event what I'm a call the lifetime of shoelace. Yeah, that's right. It's a last forever. And instead of being a 27 inches long, it's a 2,000 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> so when your shoelaces break, you cut off a piece and use. <laughs> also, very good thing about it is good for all the color shoes. Because one and a half is a brown, other half is a black. And you've got to cut off from either end. <laughs> Isn't that the wonderful Mamma Mia? Well, I'm a don't know much about inventions, so so I'm a gonna go to my night school class for advice, and and, and they're gonna help me out. Oh, I'm I'm a feel is so good, and a mama me, if you see my name in the paper, don't worry, I was not the run over. I'm a famous. America, I love you. You like the papa to me, Ramo. All right, class, let's come to attention. Please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Howitt? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Howdy dowdy. <laughs> Thank you, fellow boobers. There's nothing like a good laugh to break the ice. All right, Mr. Schultz, that'll be enough. Now, class, our assignment for today was important dates in American history. Mr. Howard, what happened in 1803? 1803. Let me see. I figured out a special code for remembering that date. I know it's got something to do with a purchase. So far, so good. Sure. My wife once paid $18.03 for a dress, and if I remember right, the dress had igloos all over it. 1803, the purchase of Alaska. Wrong, Mr. Howard. It's folding. You're telling me I don't know what kind of dress my wife bought. Mr. Howard, please. Wait, wait, you're right. The dress was a Spanish print. So in 1803, we bought Cuba. No. 
Then maybe it was... Oh, it's too bad your wife didn't buy it a bolero skirt. We would own South America. <laughs> Please, Mr. Harwood, stop guessing. You should remember your dates for themselves and not buy some system of your wife's clothes. Wait, wait, wait. 1803 was the Louisiana Purchase. Why, that's right. How did you know it? Simple. Louisiana begins with a Louis, huh? But Louis, that's a man's name. And I just remember, my wife didn't buy a dress. She bought a pair of slacks. <laughs> Hooray for all of it, saved by a zipper. <laughs> Miss Fawlty, if you have any more dates, Ed would like to supply the correct answers without any special formulas, yin, cracks, or do that. <laughs> there he goes, the Swedish eager beaver. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Olson, but I think I'll call on Mr. Basco. Mr. Basco, what happened in 1876? 1876? Let me see that. It was a great invention. It helped tie the country together. Oh, the shoelace. (laughs) (laughs) What? And if you think I was a great invention, I'm going to get a bigger one. The lifetime of shoelace, 2,000 feet along. Him and Luigi, I know we got it inflation, but aren't you overdoing it? <laughs> Luigi, of course you're being funny with the shoelace, ain't you? Well, uh, friends, I'm responding. You, you think this is so crazy, my idea? I was to think America is the biggest the country for inventions. and, and Well, I, I, I hate to sound discouraging, Mr. Basco, but, well, how practical is your idea? Well, I'm... I'm a don't know, Miss Pauling, but, uh, well, uh, after all, the people was a laugh at the lots of inventors who when they first started, too. Yes, that's true. Sure, Luigi. Maybe you got a wonderful idea. You're hot, that's right. Ach, smile, Luigi. Maybe for 2,000 for shoelaces, you will go on to make 2,000 for socks, and then 2,000 for shoes, and then in a few years, we'll be a nation of octopuses. <laughs> Everybody, I'm only joking, you won't have it. <laughs> And Luigi, the best of luck to you, because secretly I admire you for your spirit. Like you say, in America, any invention could be a success, and maybe yours will be. Well, th- thanks, Mr. Schultz. But that's what I want to find out from all of you. How am I going to make my idea a big success? Well, I think the best advice you could get, Mr. Basco, would come from a patent attorney. Patent attorney? Yes, he'd help you protect it, get a patent, and might even help you to sell it. Luigi, I was making the most fun. So I'm going to help you with the patent attorney, and then I'm also going to be the worst customer. Me too, Luigi. And me. Oh, what a thank you, friends. You, you are so wonderful to me. Miss Spalding, make another mark in your lesson book for date. Yes? 1951, Luigi Basco invented the lifetime shoelace, the greatest invention since the fourth. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Hoo hoo. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Goodbye. Well, uh, well uh, what did the, the, the patent uh, man say? Is he going to take my case? Yeah, yeah, sure. But you've got to have it $30 for the patent application first. $30? Yeah, yeah Luigi. Ah. If you could only forget about that shoelace and invent some way to make money. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a... I'm a... Hey, wait. Huh? Wait, sure, some got it. Yeah? Pasquale, he's going to lend me the $30. He's always looking for an investment. He's going to invest in me. Pasquale? That Stilvland? <laughs> Pasquale wouldn't invest money in a pick and shovel if he was living in Fort Knox. But <laughs> <laughs> then... Uh, then you don't think he's going to lend me the money? Luigi, the only thing he's going to lend you is his daughter, Rosa. <laughs> and that he only lends for keeps. <laughs> but wait, Luigi. Wait, I don't want to discourage you. Maybe you can do it. But whatever you do, when you talk to Pasquale about money, don't, don't ask him suddenly. That shark might kill him. Yeah. First, first begin by uh, talking about the weather. The weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then you switch to politics. Politics, yeah. And then you discuss science, and then you talk about invention. Then I'm going to tell him to lend me the $30. Yeah. And then the shark will kill him. <laughs> Luigi! 
Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Pasquale. Uh, uh, it's a nice little wedding, no? Beautiful wedding, little banana nose. Pepper, <laughs> Pepper says it's going to be sunny all the day. Could it be a little melon ahead? <laughs> and I'm going to be surprised if the temperatures are going to go up to 80 degrees. Anything is possible. It's a quick country. Now, take a politics, sir. Uh, Pasquale, what do you think about a politics? Well, I'm glad you asked me, Luigi. It shows you know who to ask. Good. Now, take a science, sir. Wait, I'm not through with the politics here. <laughs> now, Luigi, I don't want you should unquote me, but I think... Oh, Pasquale... Pascal, you certainly smart. <laughs> now, you know anything about uh, inventions? <laughs> do I know? Uh, what do you want to know? Well, uh, I'm going to want to know if a certain someone invented something, would a certain someone be smart enough to invest the money in that a certain something? Hmm. I should have thought a certain someone was leading up to a certain something. <laughs> Luigi, how much you want? What's it for? And I'm sorry, but you ain't getting it. <laughs> <laughs> But, Pasquale, not, not even if I'm a got great invention. Oh, look who's a great inventor. All right, I'll buy it. What did you invent, the little cabbage puts? <laughs> Lifetime shoelace. Lifetime who lace? Shoelace. <laughs> it's a 2,000 feet long, a black and a one end, a brown and the other. Whenever you need a shoelace, you cut them off a piece. Black, brown, whatever you need. Luigi, you start all over again. <laughs> well, Pasquale... Is 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 like uh, like a lifetime of fountain pen only one. Oh you... yes, I know. Only you don't get the guarantee the shoe gets it. <laughs> Luigi, try to remember before you left Italy, did you want Pietro as a goat to kick you in the head? <laughs> you think I'm a crazy, huh? No, I don't think you're crazy. But if a man in a white jacket suddenly drops a net on you, Luigi, it's not because he thinks you a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, all right. Go ahead, Pasquale. You laugh, but. But a patent attorney, he don't have that, huh? Patent attorney? Sure. Mr. Harold J. Bunge. He's a told me all I'm going to need is a $30. Just to think of us, Quarry. $30 is a stopping of you from making a part of the money. Oh, I should listen to the proper squeak of talk. Maybe he's a god or something. After all, I'm see crazy things that happen in America. What is it? You last the chance of us, Quarry, because... For somebody else to get. Now, wait, Luigi. The business conditions before I take the $30 out of my mattress. <laughs> what the conditions? Uh, we uh, go 50-50. 50-50? Yes, I make out a contract and you sign. And you give me $30 right away? Yes. All right, Pascali. I take it only because... Because I'm going to want to get to my invention of patented and then... Then I'm going to be American inventor. Good, Luigi. I'm just like you. Only I want to be American millionaire. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Shake the partner. Shake. Oh, Pasquale. Is it going to be the start of Vasco Pasquale Lifetime of Shoelace Company? A million is satisfied the customer. A million is satisfied the dollars. Ten a million is satisfied the customer. Ten a million of dollars. A twenty million of dollars. Pasquale. Huh? Can I have my thirty dollars? Oh, you always thinking about a filthy money. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's something to think about when you want to enjoy a taste treat between your meals. You know, there are lots of times when you're not really hungry but still want something to chew on that tastes good and gives you a little pickup. Well, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum solves your problem perfectly. It isn't rich or filling, yet it does satisfy you. That's because Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum has lots of delicious, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor for you to enjoy. And the smooth, pleasant chewing gives you extra enjoyment. So for a sensible, satisfying treat to enjoy between meals, chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It costs so little and tastes so good. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Vasco's letter to his mother and nephew.
Well, the Mamma Mia is a wonderful what to happen. First, I'm going to give a patent lawyer $30. And then after that, I'm going to have to get another $100 for what they call a patent search. This means that to find out if nobody else has had the same invention. My partner, Pascale, he's put up all the money because he's going to want to lose his first attorney. And then I'm going to call just now from patent attorney. Nobody has ever had the same idea. Mamma mia, I'm, I'm, I'm a real genius. Oh, excuse me, here comes my partner, Pasquale. We're going now to Mr. Patton Attorney's office. All right, Mr. Patton Attorney, here we are. Where's the million of dollars? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid it's not that simple. Everything is coming along fine. Now, the next step is to uh, get a model, something we can show to a manufacturer. Now, I've gotten the address of a shoelace factory. Go down there and ask them if they can make a model of your shoelace. Oh, well, uh, that's a good idea, huh? Now, I doubt if they'll ask for more than a uh, hundred dollars for the model. Hundred dollars? This the whole thing was just going to cost you thirty dollars, you remember? Yeah, but if it's quite easy, too late to not to stop. Come on, please, get the money, huh? Oh, my poor Mac, we so ready to stop the sink down to the 1933 level. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no use with the gripe. So you started with something, Luigi, I'm going to finish. Oh, fine. Well, here's the address, gentlemen. To the shoelace the factory. To the shoelace the factory. <laughs> Mr. Phillips will see you in a moment, gentlemen. All right, then, Mr. Thank you. Hey, Louis, I've been a thinking. We still ain't got the patent of the shoelace. If we tell the man what we want, he could have gone and patent it himself. But then, then you think uh, if, if we told him he would do that? Yeah, you never can tell. You run across the crooks in the business of food. Yeah. Which reminds me, Luigi, here. Uh, our 50 50 deal is still goes, eh? Well, it's sure if I cut it. I make a first of 50% and you'll get arrested. <laughs> that's too right, that's too right. Hey, listen, I'll tell you what. When he asks what kind of a mark, let him figure it out himself. Right. That's a good idea, Pascal. Have hey, we got to be smarter than him, huh? Oh, you're so smart, Pascal. Hey, <laughs> hey, Luigi, we make a wonderful team together. Yeah. Like a Dr. Jekyll to the Mr. Hyde. Huh? <laughs> Mr. Phillips will see you now, gentlemen. Oh, well, thank you, mister. We're going to go in. Well, how do you do, gentlemen? What can I do for you? Now, uh, Mr. Phillips, uh, I want you to make me up a model of a shoelace that I'm just going to Well, that's very interesting. What kind of shoelace is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? You heard him. Guess. Well, how do you expect me to make your shoelace? Well, it's simple. You got a machinery here. Tell a fella he should let a shoelace machine run until I'm going to tell him to stop. Then he's going to cut him off. Well, he's liable to run for thousands of feet. Careful, Luigi. He's finding out of too much. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, this is ridiculous. Can you give me a sketch of your shoelace? Well, uh, yes, sir. Huh? Well, all right. I'm going to draw the picture only on a one condition. And what's that? you got to tear it up before you look on it. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, I'm sure other shoelace factories can accommodate you. Good day. Are you, you mean you don't want to make it? The model for the shoelace? Good day. Come apart now. Refuse to talk to the people who refuse to talk to me. <laughs> Never that crook. See how he almost got the information from him? Then he's make his own model. Yeah, but if it's quite a pleasure, if, if, if you're going to talk, then I'm going to do my work. It's all right that we should have met kind of mother. But I'm, I'm getting a tithe. You're getting a tithe. It cost me a fortune. What are you complaining about? Well, all right. I'm a star. How many shoelaces do you got a tithe together? 375. <laughs> all brown. And I'm going to get a 402 black ones to tie together. That's probably I'm going to tie so many knots in my fingers that they feel like a talking it to themselves. <laughs> Eh, uh, Luigi, uh, speaking of tying the knots, uh, maybe you're going to tie the knot with my daughter, Rosa, eh? Nothing at all, Pasquale. Always, always, you're looking for excuses. All right, all right. I just thought she could have helped out. I'm going to call her anyway. Rosa! 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 I call you, Yes, you 
window seat. Come here, sit down. You're going to help us. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. Well, that's my new invention, Rosa. That's the life of time with shoelaces. Oh. oh. Luigi, suppose somebody buys your shoelace, they don't live a lifetime. They get the money back. Oh, <laughs> shut up, you <laughs> Luigi, I'm getting a little worried. So far, it's cost me $130, and I counted the $62 for the shoelace. That's funny. Trying to forget about the money, huh? I do try, Luigi, but every time I lay down on my mattress, I feel that empty space under my head. Hey, Pascal, if you hurry up, we can go today to that big shoe company and, uh, and uh, maybe sell them in the shoe All there. right, all right. But, Luigi, all I can say is they better buy it or else. Or else what? Or else a certain pup squeak invent is going to wake up in one morning and find his neck with a lot of strings attached. <laughs> All right, but Luigi, now remember, Luigi, I'm going to handle the money part of this thing, huh? All right, all right. How much are you going to ask for a shoelace? Oh, I'm willing to settle it for five million dollars. What? That's a too much. To me, it's more important I'm sure to sell them my first invention. All right, all right. Then what should we ask? Three million. Well, we see. We let them in name of the prize, and then we double it. They say no. We walk out three or four times. They call us the back. We say split the difference, and they agree, yeah? Well, how much that's it coming to? I don't know, Luigi. With all that talking, I just made myself a little bit dizzy. All right, gentlemen. The vice president and the president will see you now. Hmm. You think you need to And don't forget, Luigi. Let me do all the talking. Uh-huh. Just shake your head and try to look smart. Hmm? Hello, gentlemen. I'm Mr. Geyser, president of the Atlas Shoe Company, and this is Mr. Perkins, our vice president. Hello. Hello. Well, Juan, Juan, you talk of us, don't you? You talk, Luigi. I certainly got a laryngitis. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, gentlemen of some of the, the Atlas is a shoe company... I've got a new invention that's going to change the whole shoe business. Indeed? What is it? A lifetime of shoelace. What? It lasts for a lifetime? That's right. And if you don't live it that long, then you're going to give it to somebody else. <laughs> well, we, we'd like to see it. Do you have a model with you? Sure, we... We just are not the nobodies. I've got a model. Let's got to give me, give me the bag. Sure, partner. Here. What? Oh, what's this? What company made this up oil? Oh, we don't trust no company. That's a, that's a hand made. I see. See? Black on one end, the brown on the other. Buy one of shoelaces, so you set it for life. I see. Well, gentlemen, what do you say? Uh, just a minute. What sort of material would you use? Material? Uh, would you use plastic, rayon, silk, or nylon? Look, you buy the invention. We don't care if you use a barb or wire. <laughs> <laughs> and have you figured out the unit cost of production, including such items as raw material, manufacture, labor, and overhead? Huh? Certainly you must have a statistical analysis of the cost of your raw material, the expenditures involved in transporting from the source of supply to the operating plant, and the capital outlay necessary for new tools, dyes, and machinery needed for manufacture. In short, I want a breakdown of your figures. Well, in a short time, I think your figures has got to break it down already. <laughs> Look, Mr. President, we didn't come here to argue about expenditures and the figures and the statistics. All we want to do is sell the shoelace, to take it a check, and we go home. Oh, just a minute, gentlemen. Oh. What do you think, Julius? You can't be serious. It's preposterous. It seems so, yet you never can tell. What? I remember many years ago how you were against suede shoes. That was open-toe shoes for women. You said they would never go. Perhaps this is it, but for a few dollars we could protect ourselves if anyone else should come along or something like it. You never know. Well, J.B. Uh, gentlemen, we're interested in your invention. Uh, you, sir, are the inventor? That's right. 
How much do you want for it? Fifty, no, five million dollars. What? <laughs> Just a second, please. My offer is twenty dollars. <laughs> but how's about the one a million? Thirty dollars. Well, we're coming to closer together. <laughs> Thirty-five dollars. A half minute. What am I talking about? <laughs> Just a second. Listen, Luigi, you stay out of this. In the five seconds, you'll be willing to take anything. Well, that's right, the best guy. You don't know how wonderful it is to feel it. Just that the people who want to buy my own intervention. And besides, you're going to get a 50%. Is that so? Huh? 50%. Look out of your contract. Here. Sure. Sure, I'm going to get a 50% and then you get the rest. Yeah, take a good look. Is that a percent sign by the 50 or a dollar sign? Eh? Well, it's a... Uh, Here's a dollar sign. Ah, that's right. You get the first of fifty dollars, and I get the rest. <laughs> Take the fifty off a million, and have a pretty good a business of that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, let's not argue. I'm willing to come up. How far up? Fifty dollars. That's my last word. That's my last word or two. I'm a take it. What? <laughs> I'm a still. I'm a still an inventor, and the shoelaces in my name. I'm, I'm going to sell you, Mister Shoe Company. Fine. Just to sign this release, and here's your fifty dollars. There, and I thank you. Oh, wait, you can't hold deal. I lose the money. No, 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 no. You're not the Pasquale. I wouldn't have let that happen to you, huh? Because I'm got a new invention for you. I'm a just thought, and is it going to make another fortune, huh? How? Oh. I give you a free charge, and is it something that's going to change the whole Italian food business? What is it? Lifetime of spaghetti. <laughs> and so, Mamma Mia, everything has come out to find. Company is about to my lifetime of shoelace, and your son of Luigi is now American in inventor. Also, I'm going to give Pasquale another wonderful idea. Lifetime spaghetti, 2,000 feet long. <laughs> but I'm going to not think he's going to be able to get a model to show nobody. Because he's a boiled spaghetti and now he's a kind of tie up with the pieces together. <laughs> also, roses are helping him. And whatever he can tie, she's a eat. <laughs> you love the son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that it's always a good idea to have a supply of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum in your home. It's a helpful, delicious treat for you and your family to enjoy, and Wrigley's Spearmint is always appreciated when you pass it around to your friends. Then, too, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum helps keep teeth clean and aids digestion. So you see, Wrigley's Spearmint is not only good, but also good for you. When you're making up your shopping list this week, remember to include Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. It's inexpensive, and it's an ideal taste treat to have handy in your home. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Norman McDonald. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash has starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Oak. Music is directed by Lud Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.